Have you ever thought about how that heart of yours keeps beating without you even thinking about it? Well, get ready for an electrifying ride because we're about to uncover the mystery of the pacemaker potential in the SA and AV nodes of your heart. Wow, that's a mouthful. Let's do it. Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. And to understand the heartbeat, we first have to talk about the sinoatrial node, or the SA node for short. But make sure to stick around to the end where we're going to talk about what happens when things go wrong. The SA node is a specialized cluster of cardiac muscle cells that are located in the right atrium of the heart. You can see it right here near the opening of the superior vena cava. Now, this group of cardiac muscle cells is very unique in that they don't actually contract, which is kind of strange for muscle cells, right? In fact, they are adapted to automatically generate impulses, and we'll get into how that works in a little bit. For now, I want you to understand that these automatic signals, they spread throughout the heart and cause the heart to beat. Now, there's another structure called the atrioventricular node or the AV node that's somewhat similar to the SA node, but with some differences. The first difference is the location. It's actually found around the lower back section of the interatrial septum. Now, that might sound complicated, but it really isn't. That's the wall between the left and the right atria. So right in this region here, we have the AV AV node. We'll talk about other differences in a while, but what I want you to know is that just like the SA node can automatically generate a signal, the AV node can do that as well. Keep that in mind for a little later. There's another structural thing I want you to notice. Leading away from the AV node, we have a bundle of fibers called the bundle of His which then leads to the left and right bundles, and eventually these little fibers called Purkinje fibers. And what I want you to know for now is that all of these structures and these fibers, they allow for the signals that are generated to spread throughout the entire heart. Now, all the structures we've spoken about are made up of specialized cardiac cells, and they all can conduct electricity. But the SA node and the AV node are different in that they have the ability to generate a signal. With me so far? Awesome, you the bomb! Now let's look at how the magic happens. Let's go back to the SA node. The cells that make up the SA node are very interesting. They allow for certain ions like sodium and potassium to pass through in different ways. Normally, there's a higher conductance for sodium ions than there is for potassium ions, meaning it's much easier for sodium ions to move across the membrane than potassium. And here's the key. Sodium ion is a positively charged ion that's normally concentrated outside the cell. And since there's a high conductance for sodium, sodium is going to start moving down the concentration gradient and into the cell. Now, what's going to happen to the charge across the membrane if we have a bunch of positive ions coming in? Well, it's going to make the cell membrane more positive. Now, this is a silly analogy, but I think it helps. If you have a room and a bunch of positive, happy people start coming into the room, man, that room is going to be so positive. Everybody's going to be all happy and excited. I can see people jumping up and down, dancing, laughing. The positivity level in that room is going through the roof. Well, it's kind of similar with membrane potential, but completely different because we're dealing with ions and not happy people. But the key is, you bring positive in, it gets more positive. Silly example, but I hope it helps. Okay, let's continue. So what we have is the membrane potential increasing, becoming more positive. Now, there's a key point here. When the membrane potential reaches negative 40 millivolts, that's a high enough membrane potential to open a different kind of channel, voltage-gated calcium channels. Now, whenever you hear voltage-gated, you should know that what it means is that it needs a certain voltage in order for the channel to open. And once you get that voltage, that's called the threshold potential. And at that threshold potential, those channels are going to fly open. Now, calcium is also a positively charged ion that's concentrated outside the cell. So once again, what is going to happen when those channels open? Well, the conduction of calcium is going to increase significantly and calcium is going to join the party and rush into the cell. That's going to increase the membrane potential pretty quickly. And this is called depolarization. And it's going to do that up to a certain point where we see a different type of channel open. 
and that's the voltage-gated potassium channels. You see, the amount of voltage that's required to open the potassium channels, the voltage-gated potassium channels, it's significantly higher than for calcium, which is great because it allows for the charge across the membrane to increase before the next step happens. Now, where was potassium ion concentrated? Potassium was concentrated inside the cell. So what's gonna happen when those voltage-gated potassium channels open? Well, potassium is gonna rush out of the cell. And what's gonna happen when positively charged potassium ions start rushing out of the cell? That's gonna bring the membrane potential back down, and that's called repolarization. So what do we have so far? Well, we started with a high conductance of sodium, and since sodium is more concentrated outside the cell, sodium starts moving in, causing the membrane potential to be more positive. Then we reach the threshold, somewhere around negative 40 millivolts. That's enough of a charge to open voltage-gated calcium channels. Now calcium will then rush into the cell, making it more positive, causing a rapid depolarization. Then we have voltage-gated potassium channels opening and potassium rushing outside of the cell, causing repolarization so that the membrane potential can get back to where it was in the beginning. Then the cycle continues, sodium in, calcium in, potassium out. Sodium in, calcium in, potassium out. And this is what generates the signals that spread throughout the heart and causes it to contract. Now I'll get to the whole contraction part in a later video, so make sure to subscribe for when that video comes out. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. If sodium and calcium keep rushing into the cell and potassium keeps rushing out of the cell, won't the cells just get filled with sodium and calcium and eventually run out of potassium? Well, yes, that would be the case if there weren't other mechanisms in place to help restore the distribution of ions. We actually have special pumps in the membrane that will help to pump sodium, potassium, and calcium back to where they need to be so that the correct distribution of ions can be restored so that this process can continue. As one example, the sodium potassium pump, it actively pumps three sodium ions out of the cell while pumping two potassium ions into the cell. And there are others that help so that this amazing process can continue over and over without stopping until, well, until it stops and then you're dead. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is what happens if the SA node stops working the way it should. Well, as I mentioned before, the AV node also functions in a similar way and can generate signals that can spread throughout the heart. However, the signal that's generated by the AV node is a bit slower than the SA node. The normal rate is around 40 to 60 beats per minute, whereas the SA node's rate is around 60 to 100 beats per minute. That's why the one that sets the pace is the SA node, which is why we call the SA node the pacemaker of the heart. Now, if something goes wrong and the SA node stops firing or if its signals are disrupted, that can lead to various heart rhythm disorders or arrhythmias. When that happens, the AV node can actually step in and compensate, but only to a certain extent. Now, this may not be enough to meet the body's needs during all circumstances, especially during things like physical activity or increased stress. And in those cases, sometimes medical intervention may be needed to fix the underlying problem. And in some cases, a patient may need an artificial pacemaker to try to restore the normal heart function. Now, I have a question for you to help take your understanding of the pacemaker to the next level. Our hearts are amazing. They adapt to different situations. For example, when we're exercising or when we're stressed out or when we're sleeping, what do you think is happening with the cells of the SA node in these situations? Choose one of those situations and describe what you think has to happen in order to change the heart rate and the underlying mechanisms and do that in the comments below. Let's discuss and learn more. Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology where we're making biology fun and I'll see you in the next video.